How many are ready for the Word of God today? Come on. Man, I don't know if I've ever been excited, more excited to preach than I am right now. Because this is the first message of 2020, and I am ready to deliver today. Amen? So let's go to the Word of God. Stand with me, if you will. Out of honor of God's Word, we stand if you are physically able to. We just want to honor the revered Word of the Lord. And again, I want to say thank you for your faithfulness in 2019. And uh, let's up the game in 2020. Let's make it better than ever. I am planning on this being the best year of my life. And I pray that it's going to be the best year of yours as well. Amen. So let's kick off the year. Ecclesiastes chapter number 3. Let's kick off the year together. Ecclesiastes, the third chapter. And I'm going to begin reading in verse number 1. Ecclesiastes, a little over halfway through the Old Testament. So if you're in the book of Luke, you're in the wrong Testament. Let's go to the Old Testament today. And let's find what the wise man said. This book was written by Solomon, wisest man who ever lived. And let's see what the Holy Ghost has to say through this wise man today. Ecclesiastes chapter number three. I'll give you a chance to find that or power up your phone, your iPad, whatever it is that you use to uh, read the word of God. If your iPhone is not powering, can't wait too much longer. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Yeah, I know we have it so tough, don't we? But the Lord delivers us out of them all, so he will deliver your iPhone, or maybe deliver you from your iPhone. Maybe that's even better yet. All right, here we go. You ready? Verse number one, chapter number three, the Bible said, in everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. There's a time to be born, and there is a time to die. There is a time to plant, and there is a time to pluck up that which is planted. For sake of time, I will not read the rest of that conversation, but I will skip down to verse number 11, where the Bible said that he, speaking of God, hath made everything beautiful in its time. And also he has put eternity in their heart, except that no man can find out the work that God does from beginning to end. Nobody can figure out what God is doing. Only God knows. Amen? My subject this morning is simply this. Now is the time. Amen. Well, I believe 2020 is the year that can change the rest of your life. Amen. How many would like to see that happen? Come on, somebody shout amen. Now is the time. You can be seated if you want to. If you want to stay standing, that's fine too. I'll preach on. Doesn't matter to me. 2020, here we are, first Sunday of the year. How many are excited about it? Amen. There's just an excitement, a freshness, a newness. Uh, every time that we come into a brand new year, there's just this anticipation that we have within us. I've had it for the past four days, and it just continues to grow as I look at the year 2020 and expect God to do great things in my life and within our church. The slate is clean. The calendar is pure. All the mistakes of 2019 are behind us. Uh, everything now is fresh, clear, and we are ready to hit the ground running in 2020. But let me tell you this, before we get too far into that, just because the calendar changes doesn't mean you've changed. You see, so many times we think that because the new year comes that automatically everything is going to change. No, the calendar changes automatically, but I have to change intentionally. We have to change by choice. We have to decide to change. And I just want to make a declaration in front of all of you here today and in front of all of those that are watching on live stream from around the country. I'm making a declaration to you right now. I refuse to move into the new year the same man that I was last year. And I hope that you will as well. I want you to make a declaration that 2020, you will not be the same person that you were a year ago. Because I believe that 2020 is not only the beginning of a brand new year and a brand new decade, 2020 is the beginning of a brand new stage of your life. 
I don't say that lightly. This has been on my heart now for some time, a couple of months, that this coming year is not just the beginning of a new year, but rather it is the beginning of a brand new season, a stage of your life. And you are going to walk onto the stage of 2020 with the greatest stage manager that has ever lived, and that is the creator of the universe. He has already set the stage of 2020 with the props, with the people, and the plot that he wants to be played out in your life. And all you need to do is walk onto this stage and allow God to direct you, the Holy Ghost to direct you. This is crucial. If you try to take the props and the, and the, and, and, and the plot and you try to take that out of the hands of God, your drama, your production of your life is going to turn into a tragedy. But if you let God have control, how many believe you're going to have the greatest year of your life? Somebody shout amen. Let him write the plot of 2020 because this is a brand new stage and you can walk onto this stage with confidence. You mean, you don't, let me, here's why you can be confident. The Bible said this, get this in your spirit. The Bible said that you can be confident. Why? Because he which hath begun a good work in you is going to perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. If God started it, he's going to finish it. So therefore, when you walk onto this stage, I want you to walk confidently. I don't want you to walk into 2020 with your head hanging down. In fact, don't do this. Don't apologize if people don't understand you. You're walking into this year, and there's some new things that God is doing in your life, and people are going to say, oh, honey, 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 no, no, no. Don't apologize if people don't get it. Because your life is not made to be an apology. Your life is made to be a statement. Your life is a statement of the grace of God working within you. That in spite of your imperfections, how many are glad the perfect God of heaven can take your imperfections and he can make something beautiful out of your life? Come on, somebody receive that right now. He can take your mess and he can turn it into a masterpiece. He can take everything that the devil has thrown at you in 2019 and God can turn it around and God can get the glory if you just let him have his way, amen. So walk confidently into 2020. Will there be opposition? Absolutely. Will you make mistakes? Yeah, you better believe it. Will you get discouraged at time? Go ahead and plan on it. But while the year is fresh and the calendar is new, how about we make up our mind that no matter the opposition and no matter the discouragement, I'm going to keep my head held high and I'm going to see God be glorified in my life and I'm going to win this year of 2020. Come on, I need somebody to agree with me that this stage is going to play out the best year, not even better than last year, better than any year that I've ever lived. Amen. That's what I declare, and that's why today I have declared that now is the time. Too much of our life has been wasted living indecisively, waiting on something to happen, and then when it doesn't happen, we blame somebody or we blame something, and we get all angry and out of sorts. Now is the time that we make up our mind because nothing can stop the power of a made-up mind. And when you make up your mind that this year is going to be different, things are going to begin to happen. And so I was led to this text as I prepared our first conversation together. I was led to this text because the writer said that to everything there is a time. There is a season. There is a time. So 2020, what time is it then? If now is the time... Why is 2020 a year in which your entire life can change? Let me give you three things out of this text. Number one, 2020 is a time of clarity. 2020 is a time of clarity. Now, I realize across America today, almost every pastor, every preacher, and from every pulpit, everybody's preaching about 2020 vision. I get it. It's cliche. I determined that I wasn't going to be the guy that went down that road. But I will tell you this. I believe that 2020 is the year 
that you will see clearly God's reason behind your season. Because the Bible said that to everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under the heavens, which means that whatever season that I walk through in life, God has a reason for that season. And many times we don't understand and neither do we see clearly what God is doing. But every time that I navigate through a season of life, I have to believe that there is a God in heaven that knows what he is doing. How many believe it? Shout amen. And that God wastes no season, no season. The good, the bad, the ugly, the up, the down, the mountaintop, and the valley. Because seasons will come and seasons will go. Every season has a beginning. Every season has an ending. And I know for many of you, you're coming out of one of the most difficult seasons of your life. You're coming out of a year that you wish you could forget. 2019 might have been a train wreck for you. You don't have to say amen on that. 2019... Maybe it was a year that you just want to forever put behind you. But I want you to hang on for a second because I believe that in 2020, God is going to begin to reveal to you by the Holy Ghost that everything that you went through in 2019 had a reason behind it and that you in this coming year are going to begin to see God use what you have gone through to make you into a greater man or a greater woman of God than you have ever been because how many believe God uses the difficulties of life to develop us into who he has created us to be? God uses the seasons of life to make within us the maturity and the man or the woman that he's created us. And so therefore, 2020, open up your eyes and ask God to give you a clear vision as to the reason behind your most recent season. I believe you will receive spiritual clarity that will allow you to focus more on where you are going in the future because everything that is behind you has in some way made you in into a better person. I say that because the Bible said, check this out through the apostle Peter. He said in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse number 10, the Bible said that the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while, what does he do? He makes you perfect. Everybody shout the word perfect. That means complete. He completes you. He establishes you. He strengthens you. And he settles you. And I feel in my heart that the season of suffering is over and the season of stability has just been opened and that when you walk into 2020, everything that you have lost, God is in some way going to show you and turn that around and you're going to get back maybe everything that you've lost and God's going to turn losses into you your gain. How many believe it? Shout amen. Uh, Come on, somebody. Strengthen me, God. Establish me. Make me stable. Uh, Give me what I need in my spirit. Uh, And the Lord is saying, if you will look at the season you just came out of, uh, you will see that when you thought you were all by yourself uh, and all alone in the midst of the valley, I was right there by your side. God never left you. He never forsook you. He never abandoned you. When everybody else walked out, God was there, and now he's ready to open your eyes, and you're going to see life in a way like you've never seen it before, amen. It is a year of clarity. You will begin to see the strategy in living out the purpose that God has for your life. I want you to move into 2020 with your eyes wide open, amen. Don't look behind you. Don't look around you. Don't even look beneath you. How about you look straight ahead and see that the year ahead, God has strategy in your life. With each new season of life comes a new reason for life. Now, number two, not only is 2020 a time of clarity, but I believe 2020 is a time of new birth. The Bible says in the very next verse, that there is a time to be born and there is a time to die. And I understand the context that we many times interpret this scripture from as Solomon writes, we think, well, of course, 
There's a time in which all of us make this grand entrance into the world through birth. And then there's a time that all of us make this grand exit from this world through death. But when you closely examine the Hebrew and the literal translation of that phrase, Solomon is not talking about the moment in which you were born, but rather he said the Hebrew translation means a time to bear. Not a time to be born, but rather a time to bear, which means it is an active transitive verb. It is not a passive word. In other words, God is saying there comes a time in which you need to give birth. Now, in the natural, I'd love to see a whole lot of babies born in our church in 2020. Is that all right to say? I want to see young families come in our church and raise their family in the house of God. There's too many families that are doing stupid things out there, raising kids. I want to see young families raise babies in the house of God. But what happens in the natural also parallels in the supernatural, which let me tell you that I believe, and I feel this in my spirit, which is why I am preaching it, that in the supernatural, 2020, there will be things born in the realm of the unseen that will translate into opportunities in the realm of the natural. There are things in the supernatural that are happening right now that there's coming a time in which I believe that new ministries and new ideas and new businesses and new ideology is going to be born in the realm of the supernatural. And that's going to translate into opportunities and open doors in the natural. In fact, I just want to say this. I want 2020 to be a year of life in our church. Can somebody shout amen with me? We've had too much death. We've had too much loss. We've had too much pain. I believe 2020 said this is a year of life, not just for our congregation. This is a year of life for the community of South Bend. And I believe prophetically we can declare life over this entire church and over this entire community and say, God, I'm ready for some birth. I'm ready for some life. I'm ready for some health. I'm ready for things to evolve and to come to pass. If you stand with me, shout amen. I really believe that there's been things in your life that have been in the incubation process. You've been thinking about it. You've been praying about it. You've been dreaming about it. You've been talking about it. It's been incubating sometime for months, maybe years, maybe even decades. There are things in my life that I've been praying about that have not yet come to pass and I just declared even this morning as I had my hands raised in worship that this is the year that I believe those things that have been incubating for years are actually going to be born in my life. And I just declare the same thing over you as well. How many have had some things that have been incubating for years? Come on, raise your hand with me. You've been praying about something, an opportunity that has not yet presented itself. How many believe we can take authority in the realm of the Holy Ghost and we can say this is the year, 2020 is the year, this is the year that it's going to be born and brought to pass, and I receive that in Jesus' name. If you're with me on that, shout amen. Now, why can I say that? The number 20 in the Bible, when you look at numerology, the meaning of the number 20 actually symbolizes the cycle of completeness. Number 20 is mentioned 117 times in the Bible, connected to a perfect period of waiting, labor, suffering that is compared to a trial and that is then rewarded. You look at all the examples. Jacob, he waited 20 years to finally get his wives and his property released from his father-in-law. So if you're looking for a wife, be patient. It may take you 20 years, but she's coming. She's coming. She, well, stop. Solomon, 20 years it took for him to build his house and the house of God before he finally moved in. 20 years, Jabin, the Canaanite king, oppressed Israel before Deborah and Barak 
stood up and delivered Israel from their, their oppressors. 20 is a time where the cycle of completeness comes and a reward comes after that. And so therefore, I believe I'm in line when I can declare that 2020, that the waiting is over and it's time for you to step into that which God has called you. Oh my God, somebody needs to receive this right now. Somebody watching online, receive this because there's been something that you've been waiting on for years and years and 2020 is the year the cycle is done and it's time now for you to stop talking about it and step into it in Jesus name and don't let any hater don't let any doubter stop you from walking in that which you are called to do somebody receive that shout amen come on somebody shout birth birth shout it again birth I want to see life now that can only happen though if you allow those things to die that are preventing new birth. He said there's a time to be born, but there's a time to die, which means new ideas cannot be born until you allow the old way of thinking to die. New ministry cannot be born. Oh, hang on with me here. Until you are willing to let the old way of doing ministry die. Because what happened 25 years ago is not going to reach the generation we live in the year 2020. But so many times what we do is we just keep doing CPR on ministry and programs and ideology that is dead, and we keep doing CPR trying to raise it to life. You know what? There's some things you just simply need to let die so that God can bring new life, because until there is a death, there can't be room for life. Come on, somebody. You hear what I'm saying? <laughs> 2019, I, 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 I'm going to uh, present the vision of, of, of or I'm sorry, the 19th of January, the, the vision of 2020, and I'm just going to tell you right now, there are some things that we're going to let go. And the reason we're going to let it go is because I've got a greater vision of what can happen when we let some of the old stuff go. Because there is a generation that we are missing, and I believe the Holy Ghost is calling this church to get out of just this mediocrity and out of this way of just doing church and step up and realize that Jesus is coming soon, and we've got to reach as many souls as we possibly can. And if that means I've got to let my little pet project die so that God can use me in a way to reach out to somebody, let it die so that new things can live and new souls can be saved. Somebody shout amen. New habits can't be born till old habits are put to death. New relationships can't form until old relationships are let go. Mm. New opportunities cannot come until you are willing to release your hold on the opportunities that have died. That idea that was born many years ago has had its time, and now it's time for a new one. That's why Jesus said this. He said, men don't put new wine into old bottles. You know why? Because the old bottles are going to burst, and that new wine is going to be wasted and spilled out. You can't put new ideas into a mind that is unwilling to change. You can't put new ideas into a mind that is so inflexible and so dry because those new ideas are going to cause that mind to burst and they're going to be wasted. Let me tell you, I really believe that God is saying it is time as we step into 2020 to be able to expand our thinking and our mind and let the Holy Ghost download things into us that we have never seen before. How many are ready for some new life? Come on, somebody shout amen. I'm not talking about letting go of the standard of the word of God. I'm not saying doctrine. I'm not saying anything. I'm talking about the traditions of men that have locked us into a way of thinking. How about we let tradition die and life, come on, life be brought to pass. Amen. So many times I'm the one that stands in the way of life. I'm the one that stands in the way of what God wants to do. We, we, we come to the altar. We say, oh, Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way. God said, if you would just get out of my way, I'd have my way.
If you would just get out of my way, I could have my way. God wants great things to happen in your life. Don't get in his way, but let whatever needs to die in your life die. Give it a proper burial and then step into the new life that the Holy Ghost wants to bring. Amen. Are y'all with me today? Y'all understand what I'm saying? 2020 is a year of clarity. Everybody shout the word clarity. Look at your neighbor and say, I see clearly. Oh, hallelujah. He's going to open, he's going to open your eyes. It's a year of new birth. (laughs) I want more souls to be saved in 2020 than we have ever seen. I want new families to come in. It's a season of new birth time. Number three, it is a time of investment. It is a time of clarity. It is a time of new birth. And it is a time of investment. The Bible says at the back end of verse 2, there is a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. Solomon illustrates one of the most commonly known laws in the universe, and that is the law of sowing and reaping. To pluck up simply means the farmer walks into the field and plucks up the crop that was planted in the spring which illustrates the most elementary and rudimentary principle, and that is this. You cannot pluck up anything that has not first been planted. You cannot harvest anything that has first not been sown in the ground and watered and nurtured. But it's amazing how many times we want to harvest something that has never been planted. The Bible says in the book of Galatians, be not deceived that God is not mocked, because whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Now, I was raised to look at that as a negative. In fact, just just, just me personally, every time that was preached, it was preached to put fear in our heart. You better not sow bad habits. You better not hang with bad people. That's not a negative verse. Because two verses later, he says in verse 9, so let's not be weary in well-doing. Why? Because in due season we shall reap, what? If we faint not. What Paul is saying, he's simply saying this, God will honor the seed that you plant into the ground, and God will honor that with a harvest that is far greater than the seed that you put in the ground. Did you just hear what I said? (laughs) Oh, my God. God is a God of the harvest. How many believe it? Shout amen. I said, God is a God that will honor every seed that you plant. And when you are willing to plant and you are willing to water, there is coming a time in which God is going to honor that seed with the abundance of a harvest. And I don't know about you, but I am expecting 2020 to be a year of the harvest in my life. Somebody in agreement with me, shout amen. So 2020 is going to be the year you plant the right seeds in your life. And on December 31st of 2020, you're going to reap the harvest of the seeds or the habits that you planted throughout the year. Now, I'm just going to tell you this. When I reveal the vision of 2019, I'm going to be very, I keep saying 19. The 19th of January. When I reveal the vision of 2020, because 2019 is history, I'm going to be very specific about what we're doing because we are focusing on you as an individual to give you the tools that you need and the seeds that you need to plant to become a complete person in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, what that means, I'm just going to, I'll just share this with you. That means we're going to deal with four areas. Every life group, every home group, midweek gatherings will in some way 
focus on one of these areas, you are going to have a mind that is renewed by the Holy Ghost and has the ability to make sound decisions. You are going to have a body that is healthy and that you recognize as the temple of the Holy Ghost. Hmm. You're going to have a soul that is free from toxic emotions and toxic relationships. We are letting all the toxicity go in 2020. And you are going to be filled with emotions that are godly, that are biblical. Man, I want to see the happiest church in South Bend right here at Christian Center Church. Come on, somebody shout amen. I know you might say, Pastor, but we're Christians. We're not supposed to be happy. If you looked at some people, you'd believe that. My God, I want our soul to rise to a new level of emotional high. Oh, you may not agree with me on that, but I'm telling you, I'm going there. You're going to go with me. Your spirit is going to be sanctified. It is going to be set apart and filled with the authority to live as God has prescribed you to live. And we are jumping into this on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. We are jumping in, and we're going to start talking about the first area. The series is called The Temple. You can figure it out from there. Because I believe we are going to be more healthy. We are going to be more happy. We are going to be more powerful. We're going to be more authoritative. And everything that is attached to one of those areas, our marriages, our relationships, our finances, are all attached to one of those four areas. You're going to come to the end of the year with a harvest in all of those areas. My God, I can't wait for December 31st. Amen. Because God is a God that honors the seed with a harvest. But it's amazing. It's amazing. I'm going to get out of your way here. It's amazing, though, how many times we want to harvest without planting the seed. You see, what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you to plant the seed because I can't give the harvest. God gives the harvest. But I can teach you to plant the seed. And when you plant the seed, all you've got to do is wait, and God will bring you the harvest. You know what's amazing? If I would if I would get up here and I would preach about how God wants to bless your finances and you're going to have more money in 2020 than you have ever had. Oh, you're going to have your bank account is going to be exploding. People are going to give you money. How many know you guys would shout, you would stand, you would shout amen, you would run the aisles. But I start preaching on tithe. I start preaching on giving offerings. People say, oh, all the church does is talk about money. You know why? Because that's the seed to your financial harvest. You can't plant a strawberry and expect to get an orange. You can't plant a watermelon and expect to get an apple. Whatever you plant is exactly what you're going to get. You sow financially, you're going to be blessed financially. That's just the way that it works. It is a law of seed time and harvest that never changes. You know what? If I would get up here and I would preach about how God wants to bless your marriage, your marriage is going to be so happy. You're going to be so romantic. Your husband's going to love you more. Oh, it's going to be sweet and beautiful. How many would say, Pastor, I want that kind of marriage? You don't want to answer that, do you? Because you know what's coming. Y'all would shout. Y'all would say, Man, man, oh man, that's what I want. But if I start preaching about husbands love your wives, like Christ loves the church, y'all get quiet on me. If I start preaching wives, submit yourselves to your husband, y'all get real quiet on me. But you can't have the harvest without planting the seed. You want a happy marriage? You got to plant the seeds of bringing her coffee or tea in bed every single morning. 
You got to plant the seeds of taking care of your family, man, and stop using the excuse that you don't have enough good, good enough job. Go out and get a better job and be the man of the house and be the spiritual leader of the house. Women, listen, you plant the seed of submitting yourself to your husband as to the Lord. You will have the harvest of a happy. Oh, come on, somebody. Do you understand what I'm saying? We're going to invest. If I'd preach about the anointing and I'd preach about the power of the Holy Ghost, man, everybody get up and everybody shout. Everybody say, man, man, we want the anointing. Some of you would do a jig, Pentecostal two-step. Man, we'd be with it. But if I start preaching about intercessory prayer, if I start preaching about taking a meal and fasting, everybody say, Pastor, you're being religious. You're being religious. You're just meddling. No, I'm talking about planting a seed. My God, I want to harvest this year. How about you? I said, I want to harvest. And that's why we're going to talk about seeds. We're going to talk about habits. We're going to talk about decisions. And you're going to come out of this year with a mind that is so renewed and so sharp and a spirit that is strong and a body that you won't even recognize and a soul that is so happy. Why? Because we're going to do it God's way. And the word of God gives you the seed that you need to plant. And God is going to honor the seed with a harvest. Somebody shout amen. Hallelujah. Man, I feel like doing the vision right now, but I know I can't. Some people, though, are so busy, and I'm closing. Some people are so busy investing in others that they've never invested in themselves. And I felt like I'm supposed to say that. And I'm not saying that we don't invest in others because we do. But what happens so many times is you're so busy taking care of everybody else, you don't take care of yourself. You don't take care of yourself spiritually. You don't take care of yourself physically. You don't take care of yourself mentally. You don't take care of yourself emotionally. I believe God is saying it's time for you to step back and start investing in yourself because you can't help anybody else until you're healthy. And when you're healthy, you have so much more to give and God can use you in a way like you have never been used before. And that's why it's going to be a year of investment. How many are ready for a harvest? Come on, wave your hand at me. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Come on, how many are ready for a harvest? I'm ready for a harvest. Let's start by planting. Let's start by planting. I really encourage you, join me Wednesday night, 90 minutes. It'll change your week, I guarantee it. We're going to start it. We're going to dig into this. Because now's the time for clarity. Now's the time for new birth. Now's the time for investment. And church, I want every one of you to take the journey with me. And not only do I want you to take the journey, I want you to invite somebody else in your circle, in your sphere, to take the journey with us. Because I believe we're going to see a revolution this year that's going to happen within our church. And I want us to seep into the areas and the streets of our community. And I want us to see God change this city for the glory of heaven. Can somebody shout amen with me?